other half of my summer worrying about the bed bug epidemic in Philadelphia. And as you can see from this map, this is a map of Philadelphia, and this is a map of bed bug reports. And these are taken from Philadelphia Vector Control, as well as a website called the Bed Bug Registry, where you can go and type in an address, and it shows you a map of bed bug reports around your area, but don't do it. It'll like re just really freak you out, and you'll see your friends' houses and hotels near you. So of course there's a the question is, how do bed bugs relate to health, and you know, why do we care about this? And there is an issue that bed bugs are the only blood-sucking insect that can't transmit a disease, which is pretty, pretty unique, and so that makes, you, that makes everybody feel really good, because they'll just really, really irritate you, but not give you anything. But that's not, they can't give you a disease, but they can carry diseases. Right now, there's um, evidence that they can carry hepatitis, and also we're testing now to see if they can carry MRSA as well. And so, even if bed bugs you know, keep doing their bed bug stuff, these disease organisms can change and gain the ability to be transmitted through them. And if that happened, and we waited for the bed bug population to explode, not worrying about it because we figured, eh, like they're just irritating people. And then all of a sudden, people started getting diseases from them, we'd be in a world of trouble. This map pretty much follows the shape of Philadelphia. There's no real like huge um, clusters really anywhere around. So it wasn't enough to just go look at neighborhoods and see what, how can we model the spread of bed bugs if we don't, if they, there seems to be no direction. So what we had to do was we realized that we had to go look at houses and get really old school and do, go do some like shoe leather epidemiology and figure out where do bed bugs like to hang out? What are those houses like and what are those environments like? When we went to home, we got to interview people and we were trying to figure out their awareness of the problem with bed bugs as well as how had pe people have been getting them for a while. So we were trying to figure out how have you been dealing with it? and what actions have you taken and how they worked. And it was really when discussing these issues with people that we uncovered a lot of the problems of stigma and misconceptions about bed bugs. So we would go to a block and knock on doors and someone would come out and say, I don't have bed bugs, I'm not dirty, and like slam the door. And would be very, very offended. And bed bugs have nothing to do with sanitation. They don't, that's not what they're interested in. They're interested in you. How to involve the community in bed bug research when people don't want to talk about bed bugs. They don't want to look at bed bugs, and they certainly don't want to help you go find bed bugs. And so we struggled a lot with this: how to best engage people, and who are the most beneficial, what were the most beneficial partnerships that we can make in the community in order to kind of better serve the population. And we're still that's something this like the study's still at the beginning, so we're still working on that. But we've already partnered with Philadelphia Vector Control. And that's been a huge asset to us. That's who we get a lot of our information from in terms of the reports. And it's also really helpful when we go to somebody's house to be able to say, we're with the Philadelphia Department of Health. And that doesn't just kind of help people trust us, but it also helps give people an idea that the Philadelphia Department of Health cares what they're going through and is sending people to come check on their situation. And so I think that that's a really beneficial and important thing. And so talking about this survey really doesn't give much of a clear idea of what bed bugging is actually like. It's, it's only fun because of the people I was with. <laughs> but um, this is a picture taken from a, it was a kind of a mental institution boarding home type situation in North Philadelphia. And this place was definitely the worst infestation that I ever personally went to. And was really just downright disturbing. I mean, at first it's dark and creepy and there was weird music playing. But <laughs> this is combined by the fact that you can you can't really see them here, and I decided to like not show you pictures of like you know clumps of bed bugs. But in here, the mattress covers, which were falling off, were just you know pockets of bugs. And there were 20 beds in the house, and every <laughs> <laughs> and it, was a, it was a really big house. But you know we went, and there was bed bugs on the bed, and there were bed bugs on the cat and the cat's bed. And when we pulled out the drawers, there could be there were bugs you know under the nails, and you would hit the wall, and they would come out of the walls. And when you think of something like that, this is, I mean, I don't know all the situ like the entire situation of this institution, but I'm sure that if I was mentally ill, it, I would find it pretty hard to get better <laughs> if, I, if I was lying in a bed like that every single night. And you would think that they're like, you would think, you know, that's obviously not okay. That kind of screams not okay. But what law is there about that? You know, what, like, how can we address quality of living issues like that when this is kind of a new thing. And again, people aren't getting a disease. It, like, it seems worse than cockroaches, but is it, are they the same? And those are the kind of questions that really kind of matter when talking about this. 
if you can go on like an 106 degree day in North Philly and walk around and get doors shut on you and then go find bed books, but you still can't be really that happy that you found, but you still had a good day. Like that really says something about the people that you're with. So I really enjoyed my time with them. And of course, to everyone at LDI and all the Sumer Scholars, I had a great summer.